I'm on Twitter. We're keeping on going. At Geetha Goramuthi. We are back in about 20 minutes. Sally is here now for all the business. Stay with us. Bye for now. Now on BBC World News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Anger in France as unions plan a day of strike action over the government's plan to raise the retirement age. And a warmer European winter than usual leaves water supplies running low. We'll be hearing how the business community can prepare for a drought. Hello and a very warm welcome. This is World Business Report with me, Sally Bundock. And we start in France, where strike action is underway again today. It's all about the government's pension reform plans there. The government is aiming to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64 years. And today marks the sixth day of strikes and protests since the middle of January. And unions are say that today will be the biggest they've seen so far, with workers across a range of sectors downing tools. It's including teachers, uh, workers in the utility sector, train drivers, industrial workers. They're all expected to join in. Now, part of the French government plan is also to raise the minimum pension to €1,200 a month, which is over the €550 Euro, uh, that the current minimum figure. But unions saying they need more than that. Inflation's going up and up and they are demanding more. Well, I talked to Thomas Mikowski, Associate Professor of Economics at HEC Business School based in Paris. He says there is public support for this strike action. The public uh, is uh, a little bit resigned. They still major in majority believe the reform will pass through. It's going through a regular uh, standard uh, um, parliamentary procedure and it seems that the government can adopt it. Uh, so people don't want to extend the working age, but uh, also many realize that a reform is needed. What impact is all of this having on the economy? So it's uh, pretty interesting because uh, even the most massive strikes that uh, there were in uh, recent, relatively recent history in 1995, three weeks of strikes cost the French economy 0.2% of GDP. Nowadays, the economy is very much different. So, first of all, the most productive, those who create most of the GDP are uh, going to be high paid workers, uh, are going to work from home after the COVID experience. Uh, second, a lot of uh, fr uh, relatively still small, but a relatively large fraction of the economy becomes digitized or operated by machines. So uh, the product purchases can be uh, either deferred or carried forward, as many people did, uh, for example, tanking for gas, etc. So okay. uh, it seems that the largest problems are going to be closed schools for parents that are going to have to have their ch stay at home with children. And I very much sympathize with them. So do I. I've been there too many times. Thomas Mikowski there. All eyes are back on the chair of the U.S. Central Bank. That's Jerome Powell, of course. He'll be speaking later to uh, U.S. lawmakers about the country's military policy. Also, he'll be grilled about the central bank's efforts to try and get inflation under control and to target. And the possibility of the U.S. falling into recession. Our North America business correspondent, Samira Hussein, has more from New York. Jerome Powell has a difficult task ahead of him. He will need to convince U.S. lawmakers that he and his colleagues are doing everything that they can to rein in inflation. But, but, but he will also need to convince lawmakers that he is not putting the U.S. economy at risk. Now, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates eight times in the last year. Recent reports show that the rate of inflation may have slowed somewhat, but the overall cost of living is still really high. Now, lawmakers are likely getting an earful from their constituents who say they can barely make ends meet. It is likely this message will be delivered to Mr. Powell more than once. 
There will also be those on Capitol Hill who will accuse the central bank of being too reckless with interest rate rises, that all these increases could push the country into recession. Now, the reality is that much of the inflationary pressure is residual impact from supply chain disruptions, courtesy of the pandemic. So the Fed really only has so many tools at its disposal. But that's not a message lawmakers will want to hear. Samira Hussein there. Now, it's been an unusually warm winter, certainly across Europe. Record low levels of rain and a dramatic lack of snow in Europe are pushing the block into unseen levels of drought for the for, the, for, the, for this time of year. And the reduction in rainfall and snow means rivers, canals and lakes across the continent are alarmingly low. In France, Spain and Italy, they're seeing a reduction in water supplies and it's causing concern for the industries that rely on them. I talked to Valentin Aish, who's senior water and climate specialist at the Global Water Partnership, to find out how unusual this winter has been. Yeah, what well, we've seen are records in, in many areas. We have seen in the Alps, as you already mentioned, a really um, very low snow cover and it's uh, it's it's dramatically fastly melting now. Then we see that, for example, in France, we had a record of over 30 days of no rainfall over the whole country. We have seen uh, a record low uh, river discharge in the Po River and in northern Italy especially, we see a very, very unusual dry uh, weather for the moment. And this is very concerning because uh, we had already had a winter drought um, the past winter in Europe in, the, in this area. Then we had a very strong summer drought and now we have again a winter drought. So it's accumulating. As you know, governments, companies and us as households, individuals, we're all keenly aware, aren't we? We are all noticing and, and aware of how uh, things are different this winter and last summer, etc. So how are businesses changing and preparing for what's ahead if there isn't more rainfall in the weeks and months ahead? Yeah, I mean, this is this is the really the important question. So um, <clears throat> we we can still hope that there will be now a few weeks, up to thirty to fifty days, where we would need to come to normal conditions, and then uh, we could do business as usual. However, what we really need on the long run is to manage our water resources in a more integrated and sustained way. So with 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 the situation, climate change, you mentioned it, there will be more droughts in the future, and we know that. However, a drought does not have to translate automatically into impacts and so this is where we need to work we need to integrate um, the water resources uh, management vertically um, from all levels like from the local level to the regional level to the national level and then also European and um, international cooperation but then also across the sectors the horizontal integration is very important Valentin Aish there from Global Water Partnership talking about that story. There's so much more on our website, so do take a look. We don't have time in this program to fit in all the business news. Of course, there is more out there. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Twitter at Sally Bundock BBC. But from me for now, it's goodbye. I'll see you again tomorrow morning on BBC World News. Hello there. Let's head to North America first of all. We've seen some uh, snow warnings out and we're seeing some snow pushing its way into some eastern parts of Canada 